You may have noticed that currently we have two places on bullseye that convert the double slider value into a rounded int value. Whenever you find repeated lines of code in your app, that's a bad code smell. Programmers prefer to write each line of code only once and then reuse it in multiple places in your app. That's an approach that programmers called don't repeat yourself, which is often shorted to dry or DRY. The rationale behind dry is to make code easier to read and change and to make yourself less prone to errors when updating your code. For example, if you decided that you wanted to change the way that you convert the slider's value, you'd have to change it in only one spot if you were using dry code, instead of having to remember to fix it in both spots with the previous code. Let's try to fix this. We'll first try fixing it in a naive way, and then I'll show you why that doesn't work, which will lead me to a discussion of variable scope. Okay, so we currently have a line of code that's repeated in two places. So this line right here says let rounded value. We search uh, for that again. We can see this, this exact line of code is in this alert callback here. So a naive way of solving this might be to think to ourselves, well, we already have calculated the rounded value and points for current round. So maybe we can just comment this out and reuse that same value later on. Well, if I build and run, I get an error message that says use of unresolved identifier rounded value. And what that means is Swift is basically saying, look, what are you talking about rounded value? I know of no such variable. And the problem is the variable is made down here, but it's not available when we want to use it up here. So what's going on here and how do we fix it? In the lecture on variables, I mentioned that each variable has a certain lifetime known as its scope. The scope of a variable depends on where in the program you define that variable. There are three possible scope levels in Swift. First, there's global scope. These objects exist for the duration of your app and they're accessible from anywhere. Second, there's instance scope. This is for variables such as your random target value. These objects are alive for as long as the object that owns them stays alive. In this case, content view owns target. So as long as the content view is around, so is target. Finally, there's local scope. Objects with a local scope, such as the rounded value constant you created in points for current round, only exist for the duration of that method. As soon as the execution of the program leaves this method, the local objects are no longer accessible. Let's look at the top part of points for current round. Because the rounded value, difference, and awarded point constants are created inside the method, they only have local scope. They come into existence when the points for current round method is called, and they cease to exist when the method is done. As soon as the points for current round method completes, in other words, when there are no more statements for it to execute, the computer destroys the rounded value, difference, and awarded points constant, and their storage space is cleared out. The alert is visible, slider value, and target variables, however, live on forever, or at least as long as the content view who owns it does. And in this case, the content view exists until the user terminates the app. This type of variable is named a property, and its scope is the same as the scope of the object that it belongs to. In other words, we can't use the local variable rounded value from points for current round inside the callback for the button tap, because that variable will be out of scope when the button is tapped. There are several ways to fix this, but for now, the easiest way is to just extract this code into a common method that we can call in both places. Let's give this a try. Okay, so as I said, our goal is to extract this code into a method we can reuse in multiple places. So I'm gonna copy that line for a second, and I'm gonna add a new method called func slider value rounded. No parameters, no input, and it returns an int. And then, Instead of this line I just pasted, I'm just going to call return. So it's going to return that value. And so now we can simplify this code quite a bit. Instead of, I can delete that line, and instead of rounded value, I can call slider value rounded. Okay, but then I might as well make it even shorter. I might as well just cut that and paste it there. But then, wait a, wait a minute, I should make it even shorter and cut that and paste it there. So now we've got points for current round into a single line. And finally, we can go up here, we had that error, and we can fix this by calling slider value rounded. 
All right, let me go ahead and build and run. 67, somewhere around there maybe. Oh, I got it exactly right, how about that? Anyway, if I go back to bullseye here, I wanna show you one more thing. Remember how we typed? Uh, we talked all about type inference and I showed you how you can get rid of some th certain things in Swift to save lines of code? Well, another thing you can do with type inference is if you have a method that only has one line of code, you actually don't need to have the return in it. It's assumed that you're just returning the result of that one line. So I can delete those lines there and make the code even a little bit shorter. Now as to whether to, whether or not to add the return, it's that's really a, a style thing. Personally, I kind of like the return, but it may be different in, in your interest or whatever company you work for.